Forum Swiss Liver Patients Association, Swiss SEPA. Today with the interview by Professor Dr. Nasser Semo, Senior Physician at the Inselspital Bern, on the topic of Hepatitis B. Welcome, Professor Semo. My first question, what is Hepatitis B? Well, it's an inflammation of the liver which is caused by the Hepatitis B virus. And a distinction is made between an acute and a chronic Hepatitis B infection. So you have to know that the acute infection affects the first six months after the infection. And this can heal in more than 90% of the adults without any consequences, without any complications, while in newborns, it can rather become chronically in more than 90% um, of the cases um, uh, while the mother is infected with this virus. So if, if the virus after six months, so which is the acute phase, is still positive, then this is the diagnosis of a chronic hepatitis B infection. It is important to note that um, reactive, one important point is that even if you can eliminate hepatitis B virus infection, after many years of elimination, you still can have a reactivation of the virus. And this is in cases such as immunosuppressive treatment, but also um, if you get treatment with a chemotherapy. So immunosuppressants are drugs, are medications. Let's say, as an example, our patients, we do have patients with liver transplantation, and they do receive this immunosuppressive drugs. And these drugs do weaken the immune system. And if the immune system is weak, then hepatitis B can reactivate. The same thing is for the chemotherapy um, in tumor or in cancer. This also can weaken the immune system, and then you can have a reactivation of the hepatitis B infection. And in this case, if you do have patients who do receive immunosuppressants or chemotherapy, always think of a reactivation of hepatitis B. And in this case, uh, this person should receive antiviral drugs to, um, to prevent reactivation of hepatitis B. How can you get infected? You can say it, infection occurs primarily through contaminated blood or other um, body fluids such as semen, but also vaginal secretion. And in more, more specifically, infection can thus occur um, through unprotected sexual intercourse, um, but also by like sharing contaminated cutlery. This is in the case of intravenous drug users. If they share the needles, uh, which are contaminated, um, but another thing is how you get, ca can get infected is, I've mentioned before, um, mothers who are infected with the virus, who are pregnant, they can, we call it vertical transmission, infect their newborns with this. And this is where the newborn has to be uh, actively and passively vaccinated against hepatitis B. Um, other possibilities of infection are like tattoos, piercings, and sharing, for example, toothbrushes or razor blades if you have one person in the household who is chronically infected with uh, hepatitis B. What are the symptoms? I've mentioned acute and chronic infection. In both phases, you do not have to have symptoms. But if you do have symptoms, mostly in the acute phase, it's like flu-like symptoms such as a fever, maybe like um, a pain of the, of the joints, but they also can have a fatigue, they can have nausea, they can have vomiting. In the chronic phase, well, in the, in the first phase of the chronic infection, no symptoms are, but if the uh, chronic infection progresses to liver cirrhosis, which is the scarring of the liver, then you can develop complications such as um, uh, this water belly, like a liquid in, the, in your abdomen, which is called ascites, but you also can develop varices of the esophagus, 
with a complication, which is the hemorrhage. And last but not least, for example, a tumor, a liver cancer, which is called hepatocellular carcinoma. So these can be like um, uh, late complications. And with, the, with that, this might be the symptoms. How can be hepatitis B uh, diagnosed? For the diagnosis for hepatitis B, we do have established tests. So mostly it's an it's a, um, antibody test. And for this, what you should know is there are three important markers. So we have a protein, which is a subset of the virus, which is called HBS antigen. Um, so the S is like the surface of the protein. And then you have two antibodies. It's the anti-HBS and the anti-HBC. So first of all, you do test these three markers. And if the HBS antigen protein is positive, then you clearly can say that there is an active infection. Then we can, um, once you have, and the, the nice thing about the three markers is that you can go through the different constellations or different phases of hepatitis B infection. Let's say, so if you have these three markers completely negative, then it means the person is healthy and not vaccinated. If you have only the anti-HBS antibody marker positive and the two others negative, it means that you are vaccinated against hepatitis B. Then the other constellation is if the HBS antigen is positive, the anti-HBS negative and the anti-HBC positive, this means that you do have an active infection and this can be an acute or a chronic hepatitis B infection. Then the other constellation is HBS antigen negative, but H anti-HBS and anti-HBC positive. This means that in a previous time you were exposed to the virus, but your immune system did eliminate this virus uh, spontaneously. So these are, exactly, so those, these are the most important markers. And then once you have these markers tested and assuming, let's say the HBS antigen is positive, suggesting an active infection, in the next step, you can perform um, the HVV DNA, so, um, uh, which is the viral replication, and which is a bit more expensive. Therefore, you should not perform this in the first place, only if the, anti if the HBS antigen is positive. And this is necessary in a setting where you would like, for example, to, to see whether a treatment is uh, necessary or not. Is there a handout for hepatitis B values in Switzerland? There are some handouts and there's one which I highly can recommend. We do also have the Swiss hepatitis or Swiss hepatitis strategy. They do have a handout brochure for, on hepatitis B, which you can uh, download and uh, where you can go through the, the questions and answers. How is hepatitis B treated? We have to distinguish between the acute and the chronic phase. And usually in the adults, I've mentioned that more than 90% of pay, uh, adults who get infected in the acute phase do not need a treatment because they do eliminate the virus uh, spontaneously. And those who become chronically infected uh, can be treated. But here again, it's not necessary in every individual and this is um, being made dependent on let's say the, the blood test such as the liver enzymes the the viral replication and whether there are signs of scarring of the liver and if treatment is necessary we do have two options the one is pegylated interferon and the advantage of pegylated interferon is that it's timely restricted let's say for a year and if you're lucky um, you will respond to this and then you can stop this. However, pegylated interferon is associated with a lot of um, side effects. And therefore, many colleagues do not use this anymore. The other treatment option is um, a drugs in a, in, a, in a tablet form, 
uh, a pill which you take on a daily basis. And however, this is like if you start this treatment, this is, um, uh, how do you say, infinite. So you have to take it for a longer period of time. And the good thing is that you do not have side effects. It is well to tolerated by the patient. And again, here, I have to mention that even if you do treat the patients, um, unfortunately, only a minority of patients gets cured from the virus, whereas the majority of the patients are still chronically infected despite the treatment. And therefore, the goal of the antiviral treatment is for the moment not the cure, but the control of the virus to avoid progression to the scarring of the liver, which is the liver cirrhosis, with all its complications. How widespread is hepatitis B? Um, so if we are speaking about numbers, so worldwide there are about 260 million persons who are chronically infected with hepatitis B. For Europe, the numbers, it's about 15 million chronically infected persons. And if we're talking about Switzerland, the number is approximately 40,000. Who is at risk? There are several groups which are at risk for hepatitis B infection. So uh, partners, life or sexual partners of persons who are chronically infected with hepatitis B virus. Then people or persons with a frequently changing uh, sexual partners are at risk for HPV, but also healthcare workers who are in contact with blood products uh, and blood itself, which might be contaminated. And therefore, the recommendation is the vaccination for this, health, uh, for this group. Then um, people, or if you're talking about Switzerland here, so migrants from different countries, such Eastern Europe, from Africa, the, the Middle East, are at higher risk for hepatitis B. And then newborns of infected mothers, of course. And last but not least, drug users, especially intravenous drug users who do share like the contaminated needles with, with other uh, persons who do uh, IV drug use. How can you protect yourself? For the protection to avoid um, hepatitis B infection is, so let's talk, so protect yourself by sexual intercourse, especially if you have a friend, a partner who is chronically infected with hepatitis B. First of all, you should get vaccinated if you're negative, but also perform um, 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 like using condoms, for example. And in a household where you do have a person chronically infected with HPV, do not use or share toothbrushes or razor blades uh, with the other person. And if we're talking about uh, persons or the risk group um, using intravenous drug, do not share the, the needles with the other person. And now the important question, <laughs> is there any risk prevention? This is a very important point you are addressing here, and this is especially um, the hepatitis B vaccine. In contrast to hepatitis C, for HPV, there is a, um, a um, hepatitis B vaccinations for many years now on the market. For Switzerland, a couple of years ago, it was approved for adolescents, but now for some years now, it is recommended also like for newborns. So if possible, I would recommend everybody to get tested or vaccinated. And then if we're talking about risk groups, which I've mentioned before, all this, these risk groups definitely should get tested. And if they are negative, should get vaccinated. For, for the final question, as a specialist, do you have a recommendation for patients with hepatitis B? So, okay, <laughs> what I can say is living with HPV does not mean that you are completely at the... At the, at the mercy of this disease. So if the disease is detected in, its, in time and there is no secondary damage, meaning 
that you don't have a fibrosis, a scarring, a liver cirrhosis, it is sufficient, from my point of view, to have a follow-up check with your GP, who might refer you to a specialist, in this case, like if we're talking about Bern, the Inselspital in Bern to the hepatologist. <coughs> Sorry. And, and, and this would be enough to perform this kind of follow-up once a year. So, and this would include a small blood test and of a so-called fibro scan. This is an ultrasound method where you can measure the liver stiffness, telling you something on whether you already have a scarring, a liver cirrhosis or not. And if this is the case, then you would start antiviral treatment. And this is very efficient without any kind of side effects. And um, yeah, so this, and most of uh, importantly is for the, the person or patient who is um, infected with hepatitis B, the cooperation between the GP and the specialist is usually working very well. And if you do have, on top of that, any other questions, if you're not certain about things, you can also refer to your GP or the specialist who is um, uh, monitoring you. Thank you very much, Professor Zemo, for your understandable and helpful interview, which is an additional important source of information for patients. Thank you very much. Thanks to you as well. Thank you.